Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video I'm going to be destroying everything we did in part one. No, not really. But you're going to think, what has Emma Jo got us doing? So let me show you. Do you remember last week we did, or in the last video rather, we did King Hopkins and the coronation scene, which seemed quite appropriate because we have King Charles III, and this is around the time of his coronation. So let me show you what we do. Don't panic. So there we go. Here we go. Do you remember that A4 piece that we did? So we rip it. Yes, we rip it up. Calm down. We rip it up and we get one page there and we get the other little bits go over here. So actually there's only one bit that we don't use and that's the fish. But you know, I've shown you how to do it on A4 so you could do that anyway, if you wanted to. And also we've got some fab bunting. So this basically has our mice stumbling across a coronation party enjoying the vibe and thinking let's dance which you know i think is quite cool anyway come with me let me show you how it's done so my friends let's get ripping hurrah so take your a4 piece that you did last week and that you were really proud of and that you don't really want to rip and we're going to rip along there so just to make sure that i've got an inkling of where i'm going i'm using a ruler to give me a bit of a line. I've gone just a bit up so that I know I'll get a bit of a frame and I'm using that as a guide to rip around. There we go. And we want that little white edge so try and make sure that when you're ripping you're ripping to give a white edge at the bottom. Now Rip around Bella and around the characters of the mice. That's the first rip. And then I'm going to separate them. Not because they're in detention, but just because I want them as two separate pieces. There we go. Go as close as you dare. And doesn't that look lovely already? Now, a little bit of rippage going on around the edges of our main picture. I bet you didn't think we'd be doing this last time. Ripping the lovely piece. I was really pleased with that. But I know this is going to look fab. Just have faith. Promise you, it'll be great. Because we can do this. Okay, what are we doing now? Creating the background. Hurrah! Remove everything. <laughs> Get your stencil brush size 9 and Elements Ink Blue Atoll and just work it in from the edges and corners inwards. Paying special attention to the centre of the double page spread. And build up your colour. It depends on really how dark you want to go. I mean, I knew that I wanted darker pieces, pieces around the corners. And just, you know, just having darker bits does give you a feeling of a more weathered and more interesting book. And interesting, you know, interesting is a really good thing to have in a book. Okay, now what are we doing? Sorry about that arm. This is Blue Lagoon. And we're touching up those corners. I 
and along that bottom edge, just adding subtle touches of colour. Okay, so that's the foliage stencil. And we've got Elements Ink Dark Denim. And this time I'm using a stencil brush size seven, just to get in between all those little bits of the stencil. And I'm just using it to create a frame. Now don't forget your picture's going to go on top of this, so you won't see all of it. So don't panic about getting anything too long or anything like that, doesn't matter. It'll all be grand. I love the movement this stencil gives. It's lovely, isn't it? So along the edges, round the corners, top and bottom, and you've got your little frame. Putting the ripped pieces in place. So there's our big picture and the little bits, and that's where we're thinking they're going to go. So, using some Elements Ink Sundance and a big stencil brush, size nine, I'm just gonna whisk along those edges to just make it look like they're not really ripped, they're actually meant to be like that. And that works. Okay, now let's do the same sort of thing, but for the larger picture. Now we're not just going to use one colour like we did. We use Sundance just for the smaller bits. But for the bigger bit, we'll use Sundance here, there and everywhere. And then we'll go back in with Blue Atoll, adding just a few touches of the blue. Fabulous. Oh, look, we're going back in with those. Bella's getting some too. And I imagine the mice might as well. Yes, they are. So it's round the bits that are mostly blue. There we go. Now, bibbity bobbity glue, I'm getting to the bottom of it. So I'm just pouring it straight out and using nature's spatula. My finger. There we go. Rub that in. Ready to stick it down. That's fab. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Adding some more bibbity bobbity glue to get Bella in place. There we go, doesn't she look fab? A little bit of pressure. Oh, there's some glue on my fingers. With a little bit sticking up, make sure you get all those little bits stuck down. And jobs are good. Doing the same now for the mice. Bottom right hand corner. Fab. And shut that book and let the weight of the book help the pieces stick. Bunting. We are making bunting using Dreamscape papers, Emperor Red and size 9 stencil brushes and some Blue Lagoon. I think there might be a bit of Blue Atoll in there as well, but we'll have a look. So I've just done some <clears throat> Emperor Red over a pattern, a patterned piece of paper from Dreamscape's book. <clears throat> and this is the Blue Lagoon. And a little bit of Blue Atoll, I think. That's what it looks, there it is, that's what it looks like to me. Now, draw a line down that. Um, there was no precise measurement, I just more or less did half and half. Um, and I think I've gone with three, one, two, three. Three by four, that I've cut in two, so it becomes three by two. 
I'm using the measurements of the centimeter squares on the craft mat before you wonder what I'm doing. Okay, embossing. So I'm just using the magic anti-static pad, even, wibble, um, just to get rid of any bits that I don't want it to stick to. We're using Versamark, mini crown stamp, and some wow embossing powder, opaque white. A little bit on there, stamped it down a little bit on there, and tapped off the rest. Give it a quick dry with the Ranger heat tool, and we have a crown. Don't forget to tip the excess back into your pot, ready to use again. And keep doing that ad nauseum until you have got the amount of bunting you want. Then all I have done is I've taken, worked out where the halfway point is on my... <laughs> love the way I looked at us then. On my um, the middle of my craft mat. So the middle of that square at the bottom of the crown. And then taken a line straight from the top through that centre point to create a triangle which is what we're doing now. And I'm just going to go just above that crown. And I've got my lines then to cut the flag out. Now I'm using Sizzix scissors because they're actually really good on paper. At cutting through paper, rather. So doing the same thing again, found my centre point below the crown, gone straight up to the point I want them to go through. And, just above the crown, created a flag. Now, this I have used a little bit of Elements Ink Mulberry with a size 3 stencil brush. Just to go around some of the outsides, I tend to do a little bit of top left and all down the right hand side. I've got a little scrag end of very thin ribbon. And I'm just working out where I want these the multicoloured bunting to go. Because obviously I did red and blue so that I could have a red and blue bunting. Without being overly obvious, I was going for the red, white and blue theme. The white being the crown. And then just glue them down on top of your ribbon with some bibbidi bobbidi glue. Now all I've done with that ribbon is rather than glue it all the way along, I've just glued it at the ends. Because I thought, with the flags on top, they will glue the ribbon in place along the line. It was my plan all along. Honest gov. So I've just alternated red and blue. And there we go with that size 3 stencil brush. And this time, Elements Ink Dark Denim. Going around underneath almost the picture that we have ripped up on the left-hand side of King Hopkins on his coronation day. And with the same colour, just giving a little bit of shadow on the right-hand point of the bunting. Now the important bit, let's add the story. Using a black Posca pen, I have decided to start with Some words. Let's see what the story is this time. Sorry about my head getting in the way, by the way. I hope it wasn't too bad. So far we've got they heard cheering. and found themselves in a party, exclamation mark. Hurrah! It was... King... Hopkins. Coronation. It was a very special
special. Day. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but on the right, you can see that somewhere along the line must have been done in secret. I have managed to sneak a sent something from the sentiment stickers five range and it says it's a blast. So there's a sticker there. So feel free to add those too. So I've got it was a very special day. So they danced and then grab your Posca pen, tap it with your size nine stencil brush and get some splattering on there. And that, my friends, you have done it. Well done. Well done indeed. So do you forgive me? Do you forgive me that I made you tear up? Well, I didn't make you do anything, but, you know, that we have torn up the A4 piece that we did in the last video. I, I'm going to say sorry, but, you know, after the way this turned out, I'm not sorry. I love this scene. After the chaos that we had last week in the factory, do you remember? Absolute chaos inside. To come to something traditionally regal and in its place, I think is, yeah, it was good. Good to come back to uh, some sort of organisation. <laughs> anyway, my friends, enough from me i do hope you've enjoyed this um if you've got any comments you'd like to make about the craft please pop it in the post below and i will do my very best to get back in touch with you as soon as i possibly can but in the meantime you take care and i will see you soon bye <laughs>